Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. I've been waiting a very long time to make this video and I'm super excited to finally be here and be able to deliver it so you guys can see exactly what's going on when we're talking about internal resistance and measuring it with your radio controlled charger. Now I've reviewed a bunch of different battery chargers for lithium polymer battery packs in the hobby and we've essentially done that to build up to this this day where I'm going to compare four different chargers against one another in order to see the differences that we get in internal resistance measurements. I'm a firm believer that the internal resistance measurement is a measurement that a lot of us can do at home with our own very chargers, not having to purchase any other equipment and get values of internal resistance. Obtaining this type of information then tells us what's going on inside that battery pack in terms of performance. How much power we can actually pull out of that battery. Well, we're going to be going through the comparison here in this video. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to break it up into four different sections. The first one that we're going to jump right into after this is we're going to look at the exact testing method that I'm using. Then we're going to take a look at the comparison of minimum and maximum values for all of the readings that we've done across all the different chargers. And we're going to look at the averages as well as a few other data points there as well. Well, then what I have for you is a really cool graph that I've done up that shows each one of the battery chargers and the measured data that comes from it, all color coded. We're gonna compare that up against the actual data during an actual load test. So this is real, real world results. We're gonna compare our internal resistance measurements up to those real world results, ultimately showing us what's going on within our measurements. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare the inner internal resistance measurements that we've done here. I'm going to take a minimum, I'm going to take a maximum within a certain battery pack, and we're going to look at the worst case scenario that we've measured here today and see exactly what that does to the RC Explain Patreon community spreadsheet that helps us determine what the C rating is. If you want to help support the things that we do here on this channel, including all the battery tests that we do here once per month, I'll leave a link to the Patreon site in the description below. Let's now cover the testing method that was used here in order to get all the data that we're going to go through. So ultimately to break it down, what we did is we set up the four chargers and then I recorded each one of the sessions so that I can always go back and take a look at the data to make sure everything makes sense. Now there's a few things that I had to do in order to make certain that this test was done fairly and accurately. And the first thing that I had to do is make certain that every time I initiate a charge to collect data, we're going to have the cell voltage of each one of the cells at 3.80 volts or close to that value. So we're not starting it at different voltages. Every charge is going to start at the same voltage each time within a small margin of error. And this is going to allow us to make certain that we're always measuring from the same amount of capacity because a lot of different variables contribute to differences in actual results that we get. Another thing that we have to maintain is the temperature of the room to make certain that it's always consistent because this is going to have to take place over a couple days. And the third item that we're going to do, which is contributing to the testing going over a couple days, is that every time I run that test, I'm going to start the charge, I'm going to collect the information for internal resistance, then I'm going to discharge the battery pack after that's been done. And once it's discharged, I'm going to let that battery rest for two hours before it starts the next test. So we know that anytime we activate the chemistry there in a battery cell, it changes the internal resistance. If you measure internal resistance in the first minute of a battery pack being charged, you're going to get a different result if you were to take it in a minute versus at the 10 minute mark. So this is what we need to do in order to make sure that the battery pack is essentially, I call it cooling off, but there's going to be no temperature difference that we're actually seeing on the outside of the battery. That's a summarization of the testing method here that we're going to use in order to get us the data and results. Now let's jump into a comparison of the min max values for each one of the battery packs. 
All right, here is our very first graph for the day. We're looking at minimums and maximums and averages and ranges. We also got percentage variation in there as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the very first one here and I'm gonna take a look at the, the range that we ended up getting, the min max. I'm gonna show what that looks like. So the blue is representing our minimum and the orange is representing our maximum. We had four chargers that produced results. We take the charger that produced the maximum. That's what is displayed here. We take the charger that produced the minimum value and that is what's displayed in blue when we take all four of the chargers and we average the results that is what you're seeing with this gray curve and then if we take the difference between maximum and minimum this is going to give us the range this is the yellow curve at the bottom you could also interpret this as the variation from max to minimum and then if you take the variation and you divide it by the maximum voltage you're going to get this blue line this blue curve and this represents represents the percentage variation. When we take a look at all the data, now that we understand the legend and how that works, the biggest difference that we see between curves representing the highest amount of range is where the yellow peaks, and that is the highest amount of variation. And you can see that from the orange curve to the blue curve. However, this is not the biggest percentage difference. The biggest percentage difference is actually coming from these lower values. And this is why the Azure battery pack has the lowest amount of resistance as we can see throughout this entire uh, graph, but it has the highest percentage difference in terms of that variation. So the variation there is approaching that 40% mark and that is going to be the highest. We're gonna use that as an example later. We'll also take a look at the spectrum and we'll use both of those as an example here very shortly. All right guys, now we have that really cool graph that I wanna show you. Let's get that up on the screen and go through it. All right, I'm really excited to show you this graph. This graph took a while to put together. Once I figured out how I wanted to lay it out, then things went a lot faster. But what we essentially have here is every graph here along the outside represents the charger that that we're using. All the colors are common across the battery packs. And then we look at the one in the very middle at the bottom. And this is the actual load test that we've done here on the channel where we load the battery packs at 105 amps. Why? Because in this case, for us in this video, we're gonna be able to see the actual data. This is how it actually performs. So we can see based off of the graph, we got lines that are sloping positively for all of these charger-based data and then we have the line that is sloping negatively here on our load test. What's important here is that the batteries that are performing best from our charger's IR point of view, the internal resistance, is values that are lower. For example, the Azure, this is the placement, the rank of this battery pack is number one here on the Gen Zace charger. Now, if you look at the other one that we have here, this is the load test, it's going to be the opposite because now this is about performance and more performance is better. So bigger values equals better for us here. Another point that I want to make here is that the polar on charger here in the top center. This is the one that we use here on the channel. This is the one that pulls all of our values and produces the graphs that we see when we're talking about internal resistance. This is the one that we use when we go and compute the C rating, the actual C rating based on IR. This is what we're using. So this is the baseline for the channel at this point. What I do wanna point out is if you look at the colors here and match it from the top to the bottom, we see that the Azure performs best in green the CNHL in gray is second, the Admiral is third in blue, then we have the HRB in yellow at four, and then fifth is the Spectrum in orange, and then the Z battery pack is shown in red, and it's the last one here on the both charts. So all the colors line up, but that's not the case for all of the different chargers that we had here today. We'll start off here at the bottom right with the V6 Pro from GT Power. And the very first thing I gotta show about this is that the CNHL performed the best for this specific battery charger. It had the lowest internal resistance, but this is not a common theme across all the other graphs. You can see in green, the Azure battery pack comes first. And most importantly, when we have it loaded, this is the battery that has and maintains the highest 
highest amount of voltage under 105 amps. And this gives us the best results there. And it is true throughout all the tests that we've performed. So what it tells me is that there is a little bit of inconsistency here on the bottom side for that GT Power V6 Pro charger. Now, if we take a look at another one here at the top left, this is the Gens Ace charger. What this shows us is that we have a similar pattern. There's not a significant difference between the Azure number one and the CNHL at number two in comparison to the Polaron, which you can definitely see that there's differences there. And the ISDT, you can definitely see that there's a significant difference between the green and gray bar. But when it comes to the Gen Zace, there's not much of a difference. However, when we go to the very last values here for the Spectrum and Z, we can see that the Z actually comes in fifth place versus the Spectrum that comes in sixth place. However, compared against all the others, this is not the same conclusion that all the other chargers are drawing. In fact, I remember this test very vividly and the Z actually performs significantly worse than any of the battery packs we've ever tested here on the channel. And you can see that even on the actual load test where it barely gets a value up here on the graph. You can see values for all the others, but that Z is barely even there. So it's showing us that this here, the trend that we see on this Gen Zs isn't really aligning with the rest of the data that we are collecting. However, what we do have to point out is the ISDT charger that we're using, the PO8D, this shows the very consistent results when you compare it against the Polaron charger here, as well as the actual 105 amp load test. So I'm really happy to see that. However, there is a slight catch. I did have to take values that were very, very out of whack for the Admiral, and I had to redo the test. As soon as I redid the test, we got better values there. And of course, I have to wait the two hours, let it rest, and then take the test measurements. And this is the values that we got. And I did make a change here. This is the only data set I went in and made a change because it was it didn't seem right it didn't fit in and the standard deviation between the values was so far out that it actually considered the values an outlier statistically so that's the reason why i ended up doing it for this specific graph what we have up on the screen here in front of us is the RC Explained RC Calc Sheet. If you're a member of either tier on the Patreon site, you can have a copy by downloading one of these yourself. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna jump to the LiPo Calc Sheet at the bottom. This is a specific tab within many of these different tabs that you can see on the bottom. So what we have here is a bunch of values that we're gonna be taking a look at. This is the capacity of the pack. We're also gonna be taking a look at the value we have to enter in and that's the average cell internal resistance. Now we've already averaged all the resistances that we measured within the charger. So we can just take those mins and maximums. And what I wanna do is I wanna compare those and see what kind of difference does it actually make when we're looking at the performance of the pack and this real LiPo C rating calculator is gonna help us determine that. So now let's jump right into it and put in the very first specification. We're gonna start off with the Spectrum battery pack. So the Spectrum battery pack had the biggest range, the biggest variation at two milliohms. So we're gonna go and place that in there. And I'm gonna start off by putting in the 5,000. Both these packs that we're looking at are 5,000 milliamp hour. And the internal resistance I'm gonna put in is the maximum first, so that's six point. Now we get 14.3 C and this works out to a maximum continuous current of 71 amps. I'm going to go and put that value in here so we have that. I'm also going to now take a look at the minimum value. So 6.13 is the max. 4.1 is actually the minimum there that we measured with one of the four chargers. This is going to represent, you know, the worst case scenario looking at the worst charger that we had a result from or the maximum, it's not necessarily worse, but it's the maximum and the minimum. This results in a 17.5 C as well as 87 amps. So here you can see the difference. Now, what I also did here is I threw in the C rating that the label actually has on it at 100. And if you do the math, the maximum continuous current according to the label is 500 amps. And we actually measured this pack as a fail at around 100 amps. What this tells us is it is much less less than just 100 amps. So this is looking a lot closer in both cases than the actual 500 that the label tells us. Let's do the same
same thing with the Azure pack. So the first one that we have, it's again 5,000. Our maximum is 2.08. This gives us a C rating of 24.5 with a maximum continuous discharge of 123. And when we look at the other value there on the minimum side, 128 and we get 31.3 C with 156 amps. So this does represent more of our absolute worst case scenario in all the tests that we've done, including eight different battery packs. But the actual difference between C rating, you can see the difference here in C rating is more than five. In fact, it's closer to around the six mark, six C difference versus in this one, we're about three and a little bit, three and change. What actually makes the biggest difference here is the percent difference and not necessarily the actual variation of 0 0.8. And this goes back to our charger. Our charger struggles to measure internal resistance at that very, very low end. And if there is air at that very, very low end, then this is just gonna get amplified in our results. So a very important point to note here when we're taking a look at it. I did find this quite interesting. I didn't anticipate on doing this, but I'm gonna throw in the best case scenario as well, just to give you an idea of what the best case was and that is looking actually at the Z battery pack. So I'm gonna have Z at the very bottom here and we're gonna take a look at it. It's actually a 5,200 milliamp hour pack. So I'm gonna get that into the data set and our maximum value that we're gonna start off with is 6.45 milliohm. This gives us a C rating of 13.7 with a max continuous discharge of 71 amps from our larger 5,200 milliamp hour battery pack. Obviously it's not that much of a difference here. Let's get our other value in and that's 5.43 milliohms, giving us a 14.9 C rating with 77 amps as our maximum. Now what's really interesting about this is this is a 15.9% difference here in terms of our variation, which is actually only one milliohm. And of course, this is the battery pack that's on the opposite side of the spectrum. It's over 5,000 milliamp hour, but it doesn't have a significant range. But because it's a larger milliohm value, the resistance value is larger, it's gonna be easier for our charger to be able to measure this kind of value more consistently. If this doesn't make sense, that's okay. Let's jump in and take a look at the values here. The actual C rating that we get from our internal resistance measurement is 13.7. This is IR base C rating, 13.7 and 14.9. Only a difference of 1.2 C, which is very insignificant. And then 71 to 77 is our maximum continuous discharge rate prediction based off of this C rating, which comes from our internal resistance readings. To sum things up here, there's not a significant difference in the C ratings from our maximum result versus our minimum on the worst worst case scenario that we've gone through. Ultimately, when you look at it, the label that comes on the front of these battery packs are so far out, they're miles and miles out in comparison to the differences that our chargers are gonna have when it comes to internal resistance. And the best thing about it is all of us can do this at home by using a charger that allows us the capability of measuring those internal resistance values. There's quite a bit of chargers on the market that are able to do this. I would highly suggest that you get one if you want to go through and follow along with the performance of your battery pack through the lifespan of that battery. Well guys, that pretty well does it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.